The Ability System allows you to add new functionality without having to change any of the core character controller scripts. Let's give an example of this by adding a new ability, the Crawl Ability. So I've downloaded this crawling animation from Mixamo, and we can see that it's just a basic crawling animation. And I want to create a new ability out of this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change the animation type to Humanoid, and that will allow me to use animation retargeting so the character can play this same animation. And then I also want to have the animation loop and bake the rotation into the animation. So I've set up the animation now and my goal for this is to hit play and then have the character walk towards this tunnel, unequip the pistol, and then crawl through the tunnel and then as soon as the character is done crawling through the tunnel have the ability stop so he stops crawling. If we look at this crawl tunnel game object, we can see that it has the three different walls or three different sides, and then it also has this trigger. So when this, when Nolan the character enters this trigger, that's when I want the crawl ability to start. To get started, the first thing that I did was create this crawl script. We can see that it's just a template script right now, and I'm going to remove these default methods and if we look at the character controller we can see that right now there are no abilities if I click plus we can see that there isn't a crawl either so in order to get this crawl ability recognized I need to have it derive from the ability class that ability class is in the opsev ultimate character controller character abilities namespace so now when I save this script out and I let Unity recompile. We'll see that when I hit the plus button, we now have a crawl ability. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play just to see what happens. And if we look in the inspector, we can see that the crawl ability is active because the start type is set to automatic, but it's not actually doing anything right now. So let's change that by first opening up our animator and then we will look at the different layers that we have within the animator. Since crawling will take over everything we want to put it in the full body layer and I'm going to create a new substate machine and for this I'm going to call it crawling. It doesn't really matter what the name is that's just for identification purposes and this crawling substate will have two different states. It will have an idle state and then it will have a moving state. Let's go back to our animation and we can see that right now we just have one clip called Mixamo.com that's 108 frames. Well we want that to be the moving and then let's create a new idle clip and have that just be one frame. So now we have an two different clips and let's expand that so that we can then drag these two different clips into the state so here's the idle and then moving so it's great now that we have two different states we've started to add the animations but there's no way to get to these states and we do that or we will get there with this transition. So these transition conditions there will be three different conditions for this. The very first condition that I'm going to add is this ability index parameter. This parameter spe gets set when the ability starts and I'm going to choose a unique ability index value of 101. I'm choosing 101, it's just a completely random value, but I know no other abilities are using this value of 101, so that's completely why I selected it. There's really no rhyme or reason other than that. The next parameter that I'm gonna add is ability change, and this is a trigger that gets set whenever there is an ability change that has a non-negative one value for the ability index. The last parameter that I'm going to add, this is specific for the idle animation, is this moving 
parameter. This is a Boolean and I want it to set it to false so it will go to idle when moving when the character is not moving. So I want to set up a similar set of animations for or a similar set of transitions for this moving parameter. I can do that by setting the ability index is equal to 101. This gets only checked when ability change gets triggered and this is different in that moving has to be true in order for it to go to the moving state. So let's hit play now and see what happens. And the character didn't do anything. The reason for that is because if I go back to the ability, we'll notice that I never set the ability index parameter on the crawl ability. So if I set it to that same 101 value, now I would expect the ability to activate and the crawling animation to activate. So yeah, that looks good. I can crawl around, but the character isn't actually playing the crawling animation. The reason for that is because once the character or the animator controller gets into the idle state, there's no way for it to exit that state. So let's go ahead and create a transition. And the condition will be for when moving is true from idle to moving, and then moving will have to be false from moving to idle. Now when I hit play, we should see the character move when I start moving. So that looks good. The character does move kind of slowly though. So let's go back to this moving animation and speed it up a bit. The last thing that I'm going to do is create a transition to the exit state. And this transition will occur when, uh, when the ability index is not equal to 101, meaning the ability ended. So let's go ahead and do that for both states. All right. So I could hit play and see that the character will basically do the same thing, but since the ability doesn't end, we have no real way to test it out quite yet. So let's go back to the ability and remember that one of the conditions that I wanted was the crawl ability should only activate when the character enters the trigger. Well the character is nowhere near the trigger right now but the ability is still activated and that's because of this ability start type it's set to automatic right now so it's already it's always going to start right away. I want to have it only start when the character enters a trigger and there's a handy base class for that called detect object ability base. This base class is useful if you want an ability to only start on when it's interacting with another object. In this case, when I let it recompile, we'll see that there's another parameter that shows up. And I only want this ability to start when it enters the enters a trigger. So this object detection mode I'm going to change that to trigger instead of character cast. And I want I don't want the object to, or the ability to start when it enters any trigger. I only want it to start when it enters certain triggers. So I'm going to do that by adding this object identifier component to the trigger and I'll give it the same ID as what I gave the animation, a value of 101. And then under the ability we can set that object ID to 101 as well. And now when I hit play, we should see that the crawl ability does not start right away, but it will only start when the character enters the trigger. This does not deal with stopping at all though, so that's why the character keeps moving, or it keeps staying in the crawl state. When I entered this trigger, we'll notice that the character still had the pistol equipped and we can see that it's still in his hand. It's faded right now, but if I move the camera, yeah, so the ability, or the pistol is still equipped. It's kind of through the ground right now, but it's definitely still equipped. Now I can change that, or I can have him unequip it by first adding this item equip verifier ability, and then under crawl, under the allowed equip slots, we don't want any slots to be able to be equipped. 
So now when I hit play, the character should first unequip the pistol before he starts playing the crawl animation. So that actually looked good because we can see that the pistol is no longer equipped. Actually, yeah. So just looking under the floor just for proof. Yeah, so the pistol is no longer there. Now let's get to some scripting. And the first thing that I want to do is have the ability, um, I'm just looking at my notes right now. I want the ability to apply, in, okay, so we're not, we're not using root motion for rotation right now. And I don't want the ability to be able to turn so quickly. So when I go ahead and, when I go ahead and uh, start the ability, we can see that he can turn around really quickly right now. Let's go ahead and limit that. And we can limit that by first adding a new method to the ability called max rotation angle, which is the number of degrees that the character can rotate at any one frame. And we will then override this apply rotation method. Apply rotation gets called immediately before the character controller is about to set the rotation. And this method is useful if you don't necessarily want to apply any new rotation. You just want to restrict the current rotation or make sure the current rotation is valid. And we're going to do that by adding this logic right here. So what this is doing is it's taking the character's current torque value or its rotational value and comparing it to the identity quaternion and that will get an angle. If that angle is greater than the max rotation angle, then we want to basically restrict it to that max rotation angle. And so that's what this slurp is doing. So now when I hit play, we'll be able to see that the character will not be able to rotate so quickly. So it gets done compiling. Now when I hit play, so I'm, I'm actually rotating right now, but he's moving too far ahead. So it works. So he's moving, he's rotating very slowly right now. So it's probably a little bit too slowly, but at least it shows that the, the animation or the setting is working. So let me go ahead and bump up that value a bit. So instead of a 0.5 value, let's do five. So now he can rotate at most five frame or five degrees a frame. So yeah, that's a little bit better. It's still probably a little bit quick, but at least it's not instant like it was before, or basically instant. The next thing that I want to do is override a method called should block ability start. And what this method does is it gets called whenever a new ability is going to be started. And it basically asks, hey, can I start this ability? In this case, we don't want the character to be able to interact with any items at all while he's crawling. He should never be able to equip a pistol, for example, when he's crawling. And we can do that by basically saying that if the starting ability is an item ability, then the ability should be stopped. It should be blocked. It, it should never start. And we first need to make sure we import a new namespace just so that we'll have this item ability definition. And now if I try to equip the pistol, for example, while I'm, while I'm crawling, I won't be able to. And just for proof, let's go ahead and go in to the crawl state. And I'm, I'm trying to toggle it right now and equip and unequip and it's not doing anything. So, so that worked well. The last thing that I want to do is have the ability end when the character exits the trigger. This will allow the character to crawl through the tunnel and then have the ability automatically stop when the character is through the tunnel. So we can do that by overriding the onTriggerExit method. And 
we want to verify that the trigger that's being exited is the same trigger that started the ability and we can do that by checking against this uh, detected object game object field and this will be set by the detect object ability base class and it just gets set to the object that actually started the ability so by comparing this we can say hey this is the trigger that started it now we've exited that trigger so let's go ahead and stop we also need to make sure we call the base class just so that everything can be cleaned up so now when I go back to unity and I hit play as soon as I crawl through the tunnel we should see that I the ability stops we can also see that the item the pistol was re-equipped and that's because of this re-equipped slots parameter so overall this ability was it actually didn't take much in order to get a lot of functionality and this was all without changing any of the core character controller code this ability is a relatively simple ability in comparison to what they what they can do but this kind of just gives a great overview of how the ability system works I recommend going through the documentation just to see the different methods that you can override and then also take a look at the existing abilities to get an idea of how they work.